Hey everybody, can you hear and see me? This is yeah, dog breath. Duh. Let's rewind. Darn commercial. A commercial. Dogs are adorable. Make sure that's turned down. Dog breath. Let's rewind. Yeah, it's turned down. So um, so somebody type something. Let me know if you can hear me, see me. Tommy, can you hear me? Who's this guy? Yep, yep. Oh, good. Isn't the picture quality on this new uh, laptop fantabulous? That is Lawrence. No, it's just some stranger. You want to know me? It. Just some stranger off the street who just, you know, they come in and kiss me all the time. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining in the last minute chat. You know, we wanted to do one last week, and it was too last minute, and then I woke up this morning thinking, Scotia! You want to do another chat? Commercials about drinks. I hate those commercials. But, you know, just sit through them and then I think it picks up where we left off. I'm not sure. So what you I want to know what you guys thought about today's episode. What you think about my new glasses. <laughs> um, any I Did you think it was kind of odd that Nathan didn't say anything at the end of um, Damien's declaration? I thought that was kind of odd. I sound like Catherine. Actually, I miss Catherine. She's very good at these. Much better than I am. Can they hear us, or is um, there commercials going on? Yes, they can hear us too. Well, it just depends on when they come in, because oh. they throw in commercials periodically. Scotia, did you say see my high? Thanks for the thank you, Soul Drifter. Ray Bands, um, yes, she did. She did. So hi, Julie. Where to start? <laughs> um, I pick up with Damien in two point nine. Well. No comment. Love you too. I'm just going to say <laughs> that there are lots of uh, twists coming up in the next two episodes. It's been a really, today's actually been really an exhausting day because we had the new episode come up, which is always kind of like madness promoting it. But then um, I just this morning, for the very first time, saw the rough cut of, um, yes, he is always. I Can you like, let me finish a thought, well, please? Um I completely forgot what I was thinking. See, that's how crazy it is these days. I can never remember anything. Um, oh, anyway, we saw the uh, first rough cut of the uh, season finale, which was um, emotional for a lot of reasons, I think, because it was the last episode, because the emotions that are in that last episode. Um, so, yeah, and then Arvin and I chatted for about an hour and a half about... Um, the finale, and we we're actually going back this weekend and shooting two new little scenes that we're going to insert at the end of episode nine and one in episode ten. Um, very Dallas, um, just just to strengthen the, the finale cliffhanger. So, and Arvin does rock. He's he's brilliant. It's funny too when we were chatting. He didn't come out and say what he thought we needed. It was like being in a USC screenwriting class. He was like, "Well, what about this? Well, you know, who did this?" and and don't you think? And I think he was trying to like lead me to find what he already had discovered, but of course I didn't. So he just said, I think we need to do this. And he was absolutely right. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was on a roll. Someone asked if I'm on speed. Permanently. Yes. So, um, what to talk about? Lots. Of, ask us lots of questions about the episodes, but while I'm waiting for those to, um, to line up, I do want to remind you, Season three is in your hands, and um, we're doing some auctions on eBay, and uh, we have an item that we're going to be putting up shortly, which you may recognize. Uh, do you remember this fellow? The last time you saw him, he was in bed with two other men. <laughs> this is the Max and Me action figure, the Sergeant Bobby Slade action figure that uh, Mark Anthony, a.k.a. Sidney was boop, 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 with. We're auctioning this off. It's in great condition, as you can see. It's quite large. <laughs> Do they recall from the first season? This was Ross Stein's. Ross Stein's TV show, Maxim. Oh, they better recall from the first season. Um, Ross Stein started Max and Me on ABC for three. Show seasons. them the dog. Julie wants to see the dog. The dog, actually, I don't have the dog handy, but the dog does come. It is a complete set. The cop, the doll, and although you didn't really see this in the show, the cop comes with a bulletproof vest. His boss could have used that in the pilot. He has um, varying different hands. You gotta lift it up higher, higher. There you go. See? Interchangeable hands. 
has a little cop hat, which I think you did see that in the show. Um, I don't know if I can get it out. Tiny little handcuffs. handcuffs. Which, for, you know, Ross Stein, this could come in handy. And, you know, for those nights out in WeHo, you got to have that riot gear. So all of that comes with the doll. It's going to be on eBay soon, along with the little Max dog. I think the dog's out peeing in our yard right now. So. Men playing with dolls. I grew up playing with dolls. They're action figures. Um, oh, I also want to show you this. We finally got our posters signed by the cast. For everyone who contributed on Indiegogo for Season 2, you'll be getting one of these. And if, I don't know if you can tell, but they're autographed by the cast. So those will be on the way. We also have mugs now that have this graphic on them. Um, and again, anything you buy, merchandise, whatever, the money all goes back into Season 3. Um, Working down my list here. Come on, questions, questions. Bionics. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember those. Uh, talk about the yeah. So we'll be getting the goodie the goodie bags to the people who contributed through Indiegogo out um, after the season finale, which is two weeks from today. Very sad. Um, Ian's items coming after the sixteenth, we believe. He's he's a very busy man, but he's 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 very honored. generous and very very generous, uh, very wonderful. Oh man. my God, Sir Ian, we like to call him. And I think he has one more episode. Before, yes, before he's in the next season. episode. Uh, hang on, I'm just sending a tweet saying, telling people we're live. Join the conversation. Okay. Um. <laughs> So, also want to tell you about a little surprise that we're putting together for y'all. Um, it will post air the Wednesday, the week after our finale. So it's kind of like we're giving you a little, kind of a sort of extra episode. We are putting together a little featurette retrospective called Old Dogs and New Tricks, Is This Goodbye? And it's going to have um, brand new, never before seen interviews with me, Jeffrey, Kurt, Amanda, Ryland, Bruce, um, Stephanie Kiefer, Vivian Schwartz Garcia from the wedding. Pops by to say a few words. We're going to um, be showing you some um, deleted scenes that you've never seen before. We're going to share a little bits and pieces of audition footage of Kurt and David and Jeffrey when they first auditioned. It, it will have um, a, a short scene of me and Kurt in the play we did together, Carved in Stone, a clip from Deer Season, the film I did with Arvin Batista. We just wanted to give you all something to say thank you. And Oh, we'll probably have a little bit of that very first uh, mini pilot we did with Jim J. Bullock a couple years ago in there, too. So, yeah. So, uh, no, 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 Julie. Oh, it was about being over. Yes, yes, yes. I'm afraid. So anyway, that'll be, um, I'm starting work on it. Well, I'm starting to start work on it, I should say. We'll have that the first week, the week after the finale. And uh, it'll be about 10, 15 minutes long, and um, I think you're going to enjoy it. Lots of, lots of fun stuff. Julie, it's not, it's the end of the season. We're certainly hoping for a season three. You can, you know, every time I get like, I can't take it, it's too much work, no more, no more. This one here is like, oh, no, 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 no. So right now the plan is, I mean, um, we're thinking of maybe doing a smaller Indiegogo campaign right at the end of the season, knowing that we can't depend on Indiegogo for the full budget for season three, but just as sort of a, a um, one source of income. Oh, thank you. You're sweet. And um, but anyway, the plans right now are um, our cast, of course, being the fabulous actors they are, are pretty booked through the fall. So what we're thinking we're going to do is, and I just spoke to John Cleland, who directed today's new episode and yes, last week's new episode. We're going to shoot a Halloween special this summer. Hopefully, try to get it on so it will actually coincide with actual Halloween this year. It will be at least a double-sized episode between 10 and 15 minutes and uh, and then we'll um, start scheduling you know I haven't even written season three I mean all the other scripts are written long before we start shooting so I still have to do all that and uh, speaking of which be feel free to give me any story ideas you'd like to see the guys do in season three 
So anyway, the Halloween special come out in October, and that'll like give us some time. We'll like organize and start working on season three at the start of 2014, and hopefully they have that up by the second half of 2014. And then I will be in a coma. What are you be doing? Oh, have y'all met Charlie? Charlie wants to make his screen debut. This is little Charlie. Oh no, actually, he appeared with Ryland when Ryland did his chat because he loves Ryland. Oh, this is Char Char's. This is little Charlie, and he's kind of camera shy. He's the baby. Yes, unlike unlike his daddy, who you're looking at, he's he doesn't like the cameras. Yeah, he's he's, but he's great on film sets. We shot um all the interviews a week ago today, in fact, for the uh, retrospective, and he was perfect. Just hung out. Oh, filmmakers, people. <laughs> You're right, Julie. We do need we need a Charlie action figure. <laughs> um, I'd like to know. I mean, is this appropriate? What did everyone think of today's episode? I know it's totally appropriate. Ask let's, questions. Let's, let's or talk get about feedback. today's episode. Yes, that was Jennifer Spock at the pool scene. Whatever restaurant that was, very very bad. What is there a pug? You can see a pug in the pool scene. I don't remember that, but I guess so. Oh, you. I think it's the behind-the-scenes footage. That's something else that'll be in the retrospective too, by the way. Um, On-set footage of both the wedding and um, the pool fight. So we're eventually going to give you uh, specials, individual specials for each of those. But there'll be some of that in the retrospective. Oh, and we're cutting together an interview with Bruce, which should be up in a couple days. Bruce Hart. So, what about Ross and Brad? What about them? What about Ross and Brad? So do you guys think that ended realistically? I, were, were any of you thinking, hoping that they should actually hook up? Because do our dogs aren't going to be sleeping with each other. So. Bruce is amazing. Didn't you love that scene? I Actually, that's one of the few scenes I wasn't there when they shot. I was there when they shot that scene. Uh, that was the last... Was that the last And day yes, day? Um, Ross went... Or I should say David Pevsner. Uh, went full frontal. Went full but, frontal. No, we the, saw it all. What you didn't see, we saw. The day we shot that, if I'm not mistaken, was the last day of shooting, I think. And we had done the pool scene earlier. So I was like going home and getting ready while they went to the hotel and set that all up. Then I got to the hotel and was waiting in a waiting area while they were shooting it. And I kept getting these texts from Lawrence. Oh my God, wait till you see this scene. Oh my God, they are so good in this scene. They are so funny. Um, so I just had to like trust his... his uh, uh, call on it, and he was right. I loved. It. I think that's our most, my opinion. That's the most outrageous scene we've done so far. Who's Soul Drifter? That's uh, Scotia, isn't it? Scotia, is that you, Soul Drifter? Thank you. She's gonna, she's gonna live tweet the epi later. Oh, cool. But no spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. I could give you so many spoilers right now if you knew what was coming up and what I. Mm. Oh, you recognize the room? Well, of course you did. You were in the room. GIF were these. You were there. Were what? Okay. What would be a good animated GIF for uh, scenes in today's episode? That's a. Oh gosh. Um, probably that first. Brad. That moment would be. Um, <laughs> or you know, that romantic kiss at the end. Uh, me personally, I just thought I, I I loved the romantic scene at the end with Damien and Nathan. I, 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 I like. I don't know. That's another. I just, think, uh, I just think that was really really a sweet scene. Another moment, Scotia. Maybe the uh, the knockdown at the uh, rock club, which wasn't. Why am I drinking from a plain mug? Well, because I have two old dog mugs. One of them's starting to crack so I put it in the uh, china cabinet so I wouldn't use it till it broke and the other one I use so much that it's in the sink waiting for someone to wash it so. <laughs> yes the housekeeper the maid admitted so any questions I mean I could probably give hints I know you guys hate it when I tease about what's coming up but um, there's a lot there's a lot of the next three episodes. The next, um, you guys are going to love it. I'll tell you now that the season finale rough cut clocked in at 11 and a half minutes. Arvin is very um, firmly committed to getting that down to 10. But, you know, 10 minutes is, I mean, that's our longest episode ever. That's, that's, that's a fucking epic.
So, Lawrence is always a big ham. Lawrence is just a big ham. You just never see it when he's respectfully behind the camera. I am naturally. A, I'm, I'm a ham in real life. I'm, I'm not a good actor, but I'm very good at being me. Why the restriction on time? You mean why keep it at 10 minutes? Arvin's, um, Arvin and I work well together just for this reason. He's very into, I'm an actor, you know, I want to like, you know, dwell into all those moments and just totally, you know, be self-indulgent. And Arvin's very committed to funny, faster, louder, funny, or faster. And um, he's almost always right. And there's some things we can trim. So a lot of things, when you see a rough cut, there's so much air because, you know, doing the sound editing and those initial cuts, you know, you're always leaving just beats, little t pauses between people's lines. And as you tighten those up, it just kind of, I, we're going to have 10 minutes out and I, you know, maybe a few lines and you might see them in the retrospective if we do cut. So versus an hour, let's see, let me do the math. Let me do the math quickly. So if, Six minutes is roughly that. That's when we end up on one of the networks. Then we'll do it. It would cost us approximately twelve thousand, actually more than twelve thousand dollars an episode if we went to an hour. Because if we went to an hour, we we definitely have to go into overtime, which means paying the cast and crew. So yeah, it's every time I get you know one of those lovely notes on Facebook about we wish they were longer. Why can't they be longer? Right? It's like. Showbiz is expensive. It's, it's you know, God love you. Why can't you give me $10,000? I'll make them longer. But, you know, you can't really respond that way. Holy cats is right. That's a, yes, that's exactly how you sound, Julie. <laughs> God love you. Um, well, we could. You know, it was hard enough. I can tell you this story now because we're almost done with the second season. But when we first started talking about doing the second season, um, we really wanted to pay the the cast full instead of deferred. We wanted to be able to pay the crew. We wanted to get permits so we could actually shoot in the meat of West Hollywood instead of sneaking around and trying not to get caught. Um, and uh, Matt Ladensack, uh, our producer of the first season, put together a budget that was like 40000 And we knew we couldn't raise 40000 We lowered it to 30000 We didn't even get close to that. Somehow we did pull off the second season. And... Um, is Where Jason there? This? Yes, he's the Golden Fleece. Oh, hi, Jason. App, we were just chatting. App screen name. Screen name. So, uh, oh, if you're not going to ask any questions, I'm just going to go take a nap because. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you think happens next? So, you didn't think it was odd that um, Nathan didn't respond in kind to Damien? We actually, that was, uh, that was another bit we cut at the end of that scene, basically Nathan going, uh, uh, but the scene was so romantic that it was like, Nathan will respond in 2.9, or you'll find out why he didn't respond in 2.9. I'd see, and I've said too much. There, there are some surprises coming. It gets complicated, you know, I... I hesitate to even cite this show because it had as many haters as people who liked it, but there's a show in the 80s and 90s called 30-something, which, you know, whatever you think of the show, they were very good at showing how, in real life, just timing is so much a part of relationships. You know, you're in a good mood, they're in a bad mood. They take it out on you, they get in a good mood, they want to apologize, but you've so pissed them off that they're even mean. You know, that kind of thing. Just the the ricocheting emotions, letters that pass in the mail, that kind of thing. So uh, I disagree, though. I mean, I saw a little... First of all, I, uh, I think it was Scotia who said that she would respond that way, too. Um, you did respond. It was, it was a, a... You know, it was an allowed, goggle-eyed take. <laughs> it was. We just didn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, but it was a, a, a... You know, you were definitely... I could, I could sense the surprise. We just didn't string it out. So there yeah. was overly dramatic, but I thought it was a very sweet moment. Just I, questions would work. Questions about the show, questions about my dog. Any questions? Give me something to talk about. Um, yeah, well, I wanted to leave it sort of... And The next week's episode starts immediately up with um, this question. You won't have to wait long. 
We also next week meet a mysterious stranger from Damien's past, which complicates things. And Amanda Gary, I have to remember to use her name, <laughs> the correct name now. Amanda sings again in the next episode, too. Um, when you met Roses. Oh, gosh. You know, Scotia, this is, I'm trying to like edit this together in the documentary, the whole casting process, and it was so complicated. Let me see if I can summarize. Um, when I got back with the scripts, we did a, a table reading. At that time, um, Jim J. Bullock was interested in playing Ross. Uh, we were talking to Patrick Bristow, who played Nathan Shrink in the season one finale. Um, I had talked to him about playing Brad, and he was kind of on board but had concerns. Um, we didn't have a muscles for the table reading, so I did a listing and met Jeffrey and the you know famous story of us meeting at Starbucks and him fucking a table. So we did the table reading with that cast. Um, after the table reading, uh, Patrick Bristow dropped out because he does a lot of children's theater and a lot of children's programming, and it just it, you know, Brad <laughs> teaching at school. Mm. So um, Patrick dropped out. Actually, I, I've already fucked it up. Before we had Jim J. I talked to Brad about playing Ross because I had Patrick, in, I was interested in Patrick for playing Brad, so I talked to Kurt about playing Ross, which he was like, well, yeah, well, let's, well, let's, well. and then Jim J kind of came along, I mentioned it to Kurt, and he's like, no, give it to Jim J. So, um, the, so, anyway, after the table read, Patrick drops out, um, we have auditions, um, Kurt auditioned for Brad and, and won it. Um, Jeffrey came in and read again for Muscles just because I wanted the production team because I was the only one who saw him fuck the table so I had to get confirmation there. Um, David Pepner actually did come in to audition but since Jim J was playing Ross, um, Pepner auditioned for Muscles and Brad and you're going to be seeing some of that audition footage in the special. <laughs> he actually agreed to let me show it. Uh, he was actually really good. We actually kind of debated, oh my gosh, you know, how, how do we get him in the show? So anyway, so then with that cast of Kurt as Brad, Jim J as Ross, me as Nathan, and Jeffrey as Muscles, we shot a um, like a five-minute presentation. It was actually um, an adaptation of the dinner scene from the third episode this season, only minus Bobby. Bobby didn't exist then. Um, shot that. I uh, slapped that up on Indiegogo, it was going really well, and we were two weeks away from starting shooting the pilot when Jim J. Bullock <laughs> was offered a uh, road company of hairspray, which he had to take. I mean, we can't compete with that. And I have to say, I love Jim J. Bullock. He was so much fun to work with. But anyway, after he gave me that news, I immediately called David Pevsner and was very calm. And the people who know me well know that I don't handle last minute change very well, but I did this time because... Um, as much as I like Jim Jay and as funny as he is, Ross really needed to be the, the, the weight. Brad has to be the kooky one. And with Jim Jay in the part, the balance was a little off. And you, you make up your own minds when you see the um, special. Jim Jay was really the nicest guy. He's he was a wonderful. sweet, wonderful man. Yeah. Um, and although I think he would have been excellent. Um, I think the reality is we really got our perfect cast. Yeah. And I'd, I'd love to have him back and have him. You know, like do a guest do appearance, a guest or, appearance something. or a, a story arc or something. Play one okay, so um, Jason wants to know what up with Bobby and Muscles, but we can't, no, no spoilers there, baby. You're going to have to wait. You, um, is, you'll find out in the season finale, sort of, you'll at least get a, 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 a really large clue as a what up with Bobby and Muscles. Um, I can't say anything more. I, you know, no, man, no, I would love uh, can't give away too much. Da, 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 da. I, you guys have to have something to look forward to. Yes. Yeah. Did I finish my story about the pilot? Jim J dropped out. I called up David. He immediately stepped in, and and we shot the pilot on schedule. Even though uh, one of the principal actors dropped out less than two weeks before the first day of shooting. So <laughs> it all just kind of. What are you boo hissing about, Jason? Oh, because we're not going to tell Because I'm not going to tell you anything. Jason, I think anything. you know, don't you? This sweater really makes me look slumpy. Um, there we go. Um, I can't believe two more either. What is the table censored thing? You missed it. A table read. Um, 
we didn't have any cameras at the first one with Patrick Bristow and Jim J. Bullock, and I'm kicking myself to this day. Uh, we did videotape the second table read of season one, which was at our house around the table, which is also Ross's table. There's like maybe 12, 15 of us. And then when we did the table read for season two, we had to rent a space. Uh, and there were like, how many people were at that table read? 50? Uh, so many people. It was like... So yeah. many people. Oh but my, it was, how But it was dry. great because it was, it, I think, the first time that we felt... Because Leon had written so many episodes before... I'm going to go on camera. Oh, Leon had written basically both seasons in advance. Before so, so you know, we knew what we had on paper. That first table read, which we wish we had taped, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> was so amazing. It made us all realize, wow, we, we've really got something here. And we've got some amazing people. Because that's what it's all about. I mean, the, the it's... You know, you see the cast and you appreciate them and they're all incredible, but we also have behind the scenes, you all know Arvin, but mm. our producer, Steve Curtis. Oh my. Our, Julie, tell them about I mean, Steve. It's just like, uh, Julie met all of them. They're all amazing people and, and, and they made it happen. He made it happen. No, I... And then we brought it to fruition. I brought a book of matches and said, here guys, light a spark, and they did. That's all of them. Don't ever forget the crew. The crew, the, the crew is what not, really makes it, it who really makes it happen. And I have to say, I kind of like this reputation we have. We went to the Gossip Boy uh, season premiere party, and just and also from here and there, this reputation we kind of have for being a really likable place to work. Um, and Stephanie's interview for the special, she talked quite a bit about that, and I think it's true. I think it's. Well, don't look at me. Look at the camera. Well, <laughs> Look at our audience. I think I <laughs> think it's true that we. Oh God, that, not so close. Um, we have really a amazing team: actors, crew, um, viewers, supporters. Uh, it's just it's a love in. <laughs> it I is, know, Julie. It is. Julie, isn't don't you find it funny that Evan is Evan in particular is so surprising because he's young and he's like totally the Facebook age, mm -hmm. and yet he's not on Facebook. Yeah. Evan was one of our fantastic production assistants. So many people, so much goes into so, much. so many people behind the scenes. You wouldn't believe. And it. I've I've repeated this ad nauseum, but it is very. People ask, "Oh, well, how did that feel? You must have just been." I couldn't let myself go there very often because when I did, I would you know like look up and see all these people who up to you know a year ago I had never met, working so hard and being so committed to this little. Little idea I had. It's it's especially people like uh, um yeah I keep it vague. I'm I'm gonna keep this vague, but um, in the last episode, one of the more pleasurable moments is um, uh, Jeffrey Patrick Olson, who of course plays Muscle Muscles, um, will reveal. Will reveal something. Let's just say he pulls out all the stops to try to interest Bobby. Yes, yes. Visually. That that was a particularly fun moment. Oh, thank you. Wish there was more we could do as fans. You know, you're doing it. You're way doing oh, it. Oh, you are so way. doing it. You guys are so wonderful, and 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 he is so grateful just, for you. Just telling people. That he's you... doing it for you. I'm telling you right now. He's doing it for you. A little bit for me too. Well, yeah, because he's spoiled and selfish. But he. <laughs> <laughs> no, he loves you guys. I love you guys. I, because without you, it doesn't happen. But no, just all you can do and the best you can do is just keep telling people about it, keep sharing it, posting it, commenting about it. I love Scotia that on the uh, the uh, talk soap, soap talk, I always get that confused, on your show Sunday afternoon that you um, actually gave people the link to the We Love Soaps poll and all of that. That was like, it was fabulous. Um, yeah, if y'all can just do that. Talk soap. I'm gonna write that down somewhere because every time I'm on Facebook about to do a post like, talk soap, soap, talk, soap. then I start going talk soup. Not soup. No, that's not it either. Um, yeah, rip off of talk soup. Talk soap. That will help me remember it. Talk soap. It's in there now. And it only took me how many months now? Such a sharp. Lawrence is on his phone. Okay. So, any, any other questions? Any other? 
questions? Um... But I, know, I see something from Julie. Stephen and Evan. Oh, no, we already did that. We need more questions. Starbucks. Lude Act. Oh. Is this... Uh... About Jeffrey's audition. Um, when Jeffrey auditioned, it wasn't even really an audition. Oh, yes, yes. If it were an audition, I would have, like, got a room, as they say. Um, <laughs> I did a, a, a post on... A, one of the casting sites in LA and um, he was really the only person we didn't get a lot of submissions and he was really the only one physically who kind of looked although I had always saw Bustles as being kind of maybe Italian but I let go of that <coughs> anyway um, so I called him up and we arranged to meet at Starbucks in West Hollywood on Santa Monica Boulevard in the heart of gay West Hollywood I mean it's like a clean and sober gay bar up in there so um, we get there and we arrive and we discover the Starbucks is closed for renovations. But they still have some tables in front because there's a place next door to it that sells whatever. So we got some stuff at the whatever place and sat down at the tables out on the sidewalk. And um, <laughs> in the script, in the scene in the second episode of the second season where he finally tops Bobby, there's a, a, a stage description, something like his face... His expression is as though he's sticking his dick into a vat of maggot-laden maggot yogurt. And uh, I didn't have him read any scenes. Oh, maybe he did. I don't remember if he did. But I, I did say, you know, if, I would love to see this expression. If you could just show me that expression on your face, that's your audition. And um, not only did he show me that expression, he literally like climbed up, climbed up on the corner of the table and started humping it while he did it. You're hired! <laughs> but no, it was really, I mean, he is muscles. He's so, I mean, he's not muscles, obviously, but he, he's so close. He's not, a, like, <clears throat> he's not as simple as muscles. You know, um, Jeffrey's actually highly educated. He's, I don't he's think a, muscles is simple. He, he's a doctor in real, I mean, you know, in real life, yeah. he's, he's a doctor. Well, muscle, muscles is sweet and simple. I just think of him as a sweet and not complicated guy. He's earnest and idealistic. Rigid, maybe, a little. Oh, no, wait, that's Nathan. He's the heart. I've told you my how the characters break down. Nathan is the brain. <laughs> Ross is the soul. Muscles is the heart. And Brad is, Brad is the crotch. <laughs> all aspects of this There are just one, this man's all one, personality. Gay, one gay man rolled up into... You know, like, and I'm sure I've told you guys this, too. I used to have this idea that for the very last episode, we'd just find out that that they're all uh, multiple personalities inside Nathan's head, and Arvin slammed the brakes down on that really quick. <laughs> so, yeah, he wasn't buying it. But yeah, he is the heart of the show. Um, questions? I thought you guys would all be like, "What's next? Why is this going to?" Well, but we just told them we can't tell them what's next. Well, I can hint. I can tease. Um, what were they going to do for Sex in the City, Jason? Or have them all be? like split personalities in Carrie's head uh, is Doug in the next season right now there is no, no, no next, not next season. season she didn't say next season she said next episode no it's in the next next episode oh next I don't know if he's in the next episode he's definitely in the last he's episode he's in the last episode Neil's still in New York until the end of the season but um they have a phone call <laughs> yes they do <laughs> okay that's that's that's, that's as much as we're gonna say <laughs> oh tell us about the cameo and hot guys with guns. Did um, you guys see the cameo? Yet? Is, is it online? Yeah, they've got a uh, teaser clip on it. It was. Um, does everyone know about it? What you want to explain it to? Does everyone know? Yeah, Hot Guys with Guns is a feature film that's written and directed by Doug Spearman, who plays Neil, um, and stars Mark Anthony Samuel, who played Sydney, and is also Guiding Lights. Or Guiding Light. Oh my God! General Hospitals, Felix. Um, oh, that was bad. Anyway, uh, we, there was a party scene, and Doug originally wanted, uh, asked if the four dogs could do a cameo together, and uh, we tried to make it work out, but on both two different days, one or the other dog had conflicts. So um, I thought, well, would it be okay if it's Nathan and Damien? He said, sure. So we, uh, we, uh, I, I'm sorry, I got distracted by a message. <laughs> Lucy, I had Lucy so I said I had a Lucy moment. 
Um, but where was I? I completely bring me back up to speed. Oh my god. Uh, Doug Spearman. Doug Spearman. The, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the so, was, so we worked it out and we showed up and it was basically um, them shooting this party scene and they just shot this and shot that and just had us kind of stand there and um, uh, he said he'd throw some lines but I didn't think, you know, directors frequently make promises that you know that they don't really plan to keep but he actually just put the camera on us and said go and we improved. I don't know, maybe a couple of minutes of stuff. Rylan was adorable. It's it's funny to always seem switch into Damien's kind of nervous guy because Rylan's so laid back and self assured that you know. But, yeah, uh, so you they are actually Nathan and Damien yeah. at this party, yeah. and so you need to watch it because it's it's yeah. actually really funny. Na you know, Nathan's comfortable, of course. Yeah, Nathan's like you know, uh, how does this? Uh, Nathan's like saying you know, calm down. You're like the hottest looking guy here, and. Uh, Damien sees, sees a piano and says, you think that's a real piano? I'm like, yeah, but, you know, okay, just relax and be cool. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a cameo. but, And, you know, I, I think we're going to do a press release because it occurred to me that, you know, while web series do lots of crossovers, I, I would almost bet money that we're probably the first two characters from a web series to cross over to another medium in an unrelated project. I'm sure. Do, but it reminds me. Do you remember the 80s and they used to cross over? What were those two shows? Like um, the ones on Saturday night? Oh, no. Golden Girls, Golden Nurses, Girls, Empty and, Nest. And yeah, how they used to bring the characters back and forth, you know, between the different during the shows. During hurricane. So it would be great if we, if we could do stuff like that again. It yeah. was really fun. Thank you, Scotia, by the way. I saw what you wrote. We've talked to other web shows, like Gossip Boy. We've, whenever we meet at a party or something, we talk about it, but we've never made it happen. And... Um, <laughs> There's a web series called Adventures with Mary Jane by Sarah Tam about an actress who works at a pot club. And she asked me if I would let Nathan be her agent. So um, I don't know, eventually when they get around to shooting their second season, I'm going to pop in for one episode as Nathan there. So it's cool. And I'm playing Nathan again this weekend, so I'm kind of excited. It's like, he won't die. It's the hair. I think I have to lighten the hair a bit for Nathan. He's, he has a... That's how the spinoff started. All in the fan, you know, Julie. Yes. I'm all about those Norman Lear spinoffs. I was a huge Norman Lear fan. Yes. So, All in the Family, Beget Mod, Beget Good Times, Mod. Also, oh, the Jefferson. So, and of course, all you remember family, Rhoda. Rhoda and Mary. One day there may be a Brad, but it'll be rated. No. it'll be rated X. No, 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 no. That would be like taking Jr. out of Dallas and giving him a <laughs> or a sec. Uh, yeah. No, I could see I could see Lydia having a spinoff. I'm kidding, anyway. I could also see uh, Nelson maybe having a spinoff, but um, no, the four guys are staying put. Maybe Damien could have a spinoff. Where do we shoot? Uh, where we were holding Wherever up? anyone will let us. <laughs> That's you know after after <clears throat> scheduling, finding locations like it's probably the biggest nightmare hassle job of pre-production because again we have no money, so we uh, first of all we can't buy permits. Usually when, like, say, you're shooting on a, just a, a sidewalk on a street, you have to pay the city that you're shooting in a certain amount of money so they can make sure you're okay that day. I think they put up signs and no parking or whatever. We couldn't do that. Um, so so we have, you know, wonderful friends. We did some gorilla friends who donated stuff. homes, um, the pool, bedrooms. The pool was a f actress friend. The, the actress who played Brad's ear doctor in episode two, Jennifer Kramer. Yeah, I remember that when, when Brad had learned he had to she, have a hearing aid. She um, actually, she and her husband live in the valley and have a house with the pool. So they not only let us shoot there, they actually let us just kind of like drive up a truck and transform it into this restaurant. And we had so much rental stuff there that day. Uh, the wedding was shot at a place Anything. called Sportsman's Lodge in the Valley. Um, don't eat the salmon. It's been in the fun. sun. Yeah, that's true. Um, California's not kind to the entertainment industry anymore. You know, it's never been kind to the... Scotia, I always remember this thing that Lily Tomlin says is one of her characters. Is I forget the character's name. She's a, a, a bar pianist. And she says something like, they don't call it show art, Lily. They call it show business. Yeah, the industry in L.A. is always, it's always about the buck. It's, I mean, there are some generous people here. Don't, I'm not, like, bashing it completely. But um, it's really, really tough. I, Bye, Jason. Bye, Jason. Talk to you later. Um, 
is New York kinder? Because, you know, in the, back in the day, no one shot in New York because it was so expensive and cost prohibitive and, and political. And that's kind of shifted now. A lot of stuff shooting in New York. and Well, the real problem is that California is expensive. And a lot of other states, including New York, are providing incentives for people to film in, in those places. And, then, and so it all comes down to money. And um, I think California needs to change its ways because, you know, the industry is here. Industry. And if we lose that, Leon and I may just have to move to New York. That would be awful. I wouldn't mind New York, actually. I'm longing to do some theater. No! <laughs> <laughs> you made Julie very happy, East Coast. I'm not going to New York till I'm 60. Oh, that's just five minutes from now. See what I have to put up with. Um, so in a couple decades. I love you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. See, she knows how to sweet talk. Um, oh, and I don't. Apparently not. Mm -hmm. uh, what else can we, we say? Like We've this. got 15 minutes left. Um, oh, i got to go walk the dog. Oh, you got to go walk the dog. Okay, well, you're probably sick of seeing my head anyway. Bye, everyone. i got to go walk our dog now before it gets dark. Thanks. Now we can talk about it. Yes, now you can give, gossip about me. Give him five more minutes to get out the door, and then we'll really dish the dirt. Oh. Um, oh, Matthew Martin. I th thought you left. Well, I'm <laughs> Bye, Julie. Bye, everyone. Bye, Scotia. Who else is there to say goodbye to? Would you let me have a Sarah? You no. Time. Just one. Come on. You don't oh, do it anyway. Right. Would you bring me the setup? You should. That's you're setting a, a bad. I don't care. They're, our audience. they're all grown ups. Um, Matthew Martin. I've been toying with an idea of um, getting him in for a guest shot in season two. Um, I have so many. Or season three. I have so many ideas for season three, guys. I just I can't tell you. I. Yay, Lydia CD. Honey, no, not mail. I, you, I would go to the post office for you every single day if I had to. Um, yeah, so many ideas for season three. I really need to start blocking it out. Um, one thing I know, season three, if it happens, first of all, the Halloween special. The, we're ending on a big, big, like four prong cliffhanger. The Halloween special will, if not tie everything up, at least give you a sense of what happened and where it's going. Season three, um, I think we're going to do a little more uh, exploration of the guys' professional lives. Um, I'm going to do something that Nathan Adler has not done once in two seasons. And forgive me, but... Ah, refreshment. Um, he's a very sweet guy. I'm I'm very lucky. I would never say that while he's here, but I'm very lucky. Um, yeah, so we'll go into the professional life. Ross is going to like start getting his career going again. We're going to see Nathan fin uh, professionally have some financial problems, such that he may have to partner with Nelson Van Eddy. I think them sharing an office and sharing a Lydia would be ripe. I am not writing season three all by myself. You don't have to! <laughs> um... For Muscles, I want Muscles, I'm thinking, uh, among other things, he's going to have to deal with some parental um, health care issues and go back to Ohio for an episode or two and deal with his parents. That's going to be fun. I really hope we can get some really fabulous um, talent to play his parents. And Brad, I have lots of ideas for him, but I can't really tell you because, um, well, it's because you don't know what happens next week. That kind of sets his course for the... A lot of things happen in the next two episodes that will kind of propel into season three, and you'll understand that when you see it. Um, as much of a comedy as, I, as we are, or I like to think we are, I'm also equally, equally addicted to the idea of primetime soaps and was a big fan of those, so I'm, you know, all about the plots and the... You know, Kristoff was not an accident. Um... Ian said he's interested in coming back in season three, and I actually have quite a storyline for him in season three if we can get him back. If those bastards of Port Charles will give him a day off. No, I'm joking. 
General Hospital has been doing great. More background on everyone. Yes, we want to, we want more background on. Everyone. We just want to see them in their real lives. So that you know, it's not all about. That. Of course, there'll be sex and relationship problems and all that stuff. But you know, the 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 theme of the show is supposed to be about growing older in a town and an industry that uh, frowns upon it. So I'd really like to sort of kind of like see it big and see us dealing with that. Um, kind of age oppression from outside instead of internally. So that would be sort of in a very large nutshell. That's where season three would go. Um, yes, the Halloween special. Do you want to know who we're, we dress up as in the Halloween special? I can tell you. I have Ian to... Th you have Ian to thank for me finding you. I will thank Ian. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. You know, I call him Sir Ian. He's the coolest. The coolest. It's so funny, I mean, without giving specifics away. You can call up Ian and say, you know, I have an idea, but it would involve you giving me half a banana. The guy will show up the next day with three bunches of bananas. That's just how generous and giving he is. He's just, he's just that way. Um, I also have Pam to thank for finding Ian for me. Pam Powers, who does um, um, a... Uh, God, I'm forgetting the name of the show. I see age. And yeah, Nathan's storyline will be Alzheimer's, apparently. Um, she, he was on her show, and she, I had been on her show one week, and then he was going to be on the next week, and she'd asked me, you know, any of our upcoming guests interest you? And I'm like, oh, I love Ian, Ian Buchanan. And she said, oh, well, I'll ask him. And next thing I knew, we were emailing back and forth, and voila. But, uh, Ian's been very, very, very good for the show, I will have to say. Um, he's gotten us a lot of new viewers, um, has really kind of titillated existing viewers, and he's just great to work with, and he's a great fit. You know, I, It's very important to me that the production, the actual process of making the show be fun. It's a play, and he, he totally gets it. He's also a Gemini, like I am, so... Um, thank you for recruiting the, the the friends. That's you know again. I, I I wish there was some way we could do a contest like a pyramid scheme contest. Whoever attracts the most friends to view the show, because that's really um, until we start fundraising. That's the most we can ask. And uh, even if we're fundraising, that may be the most we can ask. Is uh, it's just asking friends for money it just sticks in my crawl. So we have ten more minutes. Ian likes bold and beautiful best. I can understand that. Um, do you ever think of doing a Google Hangout so we can account with you? I, you know, we should do that. We have a Google Plus page, an account. Um, I almost did a Google Hangout talk show, and um, it, for some reason, didn't happen. And I remember them telling me about how it's just like it's you and them and everybody together. We should do that. Um, if somebody, unfortunately, I don't have my social media tech person anymore. But if somebody wants to check into that <clears throat> and send me instructions on how to set it up, I'd love to set it up. That would be really cool because I, I get so tired of seeing ugh, my face, my big old haystack face down there. And um, it's the uh, Google Plus page. Let me pull it up right now. I've got so many windows open. Um, it is... If you search, if you go on Google Plus and search Old Dogs Ampersand New Tricks Dash the Series. Um, let me see if, if I put this link here. I'm going to paste a link here, and I'm assuming it's the link to the page. Although, because I'm an admin, you might, it might take you somewhere else. Um, but yeah, that's it. So yeah, if we could figure that out, that would be great because I it would be fun to like actually we could like do a uh, uh, season finale party after the show and just all hang out together and see each other. That would be cool. That's that's God bless you all. You know, if I haven't said it enough yet, and I should say it now because the season's almost over, as is our chat tonight. I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, it's, it really is like gifts from God. I can't thank you guys enough. And it's just, it's, again, it just blows my mind when I think about how, how many terrific people I've met and how giving and supportive you guys are. And um, 
verklemmt, verklemmt. It's really, it's very moving, you know. It's every time I, I start to think, oh well, you know, maybe we won't do a third season. I'm overworked. I need a vacay. I, you know, I can't do it because I, I don't want to disappoint you guys. And I know it's like childbirth. I was, I think I said this last time. I was a Lamaze partner for a friend of mine when she had a baby in the '80s, and I used to always think, why would any woman do that twice after giving birth once? You would do it again, but that's kind of like how it is doing the season. You know, it's very hard work and can be very stressful, but the joy of it coming to life and sharing it with other people makes you completely forget all of that, and it just makes you eager to do it again. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it's, I'm not a fan, well, I'm sort of a fan of mean humor, but I'm, I think those shows die really quick. You know, I, I, I wanted a show where the guys had hearts. I wanted to show gay men in relationships where they weren't banging each other. Um, group hug, <laughs> just like Mary Tyler Moore. Been watching a lot of her lately. Did you guys n ever see an episode of Mary Tyler Moore where she got addicted to sleeping pills? I saw it for the first time. I could not believe it. Ah, the 70s. Mm. I know it's awful, but uh, I actually took a nap right before the chat, so I woke up, ground the tea, or grabbed the tea that Lawrence handed me, and like sat down. You gonna have a big O there? A big O? Big orgasm? Oh, <laughs> from the cigarette? Yeah. Oh, no, honey. My orgasms are much louder than that. Oh, it's a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. It's a good thing Nora's not watching. <laughs> I started talking about my orgasm. She would... <laughs> Sorry, Nora. <laughs> I can say that, though, because Nora's the first person to tell me she's got a dirty, dirty mind, and all the thoughts that come to her, so I, I think she's okay. I, I, I don't think she'll be offended. I hope not. And if you are, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to be offensive. I just, me and my mouth. Did you guys see Linda Carter on the talk the other day? They were talking about how I guess one of the real housewives of some other show or another, I can't keep track of them, had sex with Gerard Butler. And she was offended because when she saw Mr. Butler at some event later, he didn't know who she was. And Linda Carter, talking about it, said something like, well, you know, maybe if she was somebody who was interesting, who was known for something, and the audience sort of gasped, and <laughs> it was like, she's like, I, I, I take that back, because I think she knew it was going to be a shit storm. You can't say anything nowadays without, it's really, all right, you know, I'm surprised the show hasn't pissed somebody off. Mm. And uh, Scotia, I should plug, I'm going to be on, so, uh, Talk Soap. See, I got it. I'm going to be on Talk Soap on Thursday, April 18th, the day after the finale. Um, to talk about the season and all of that. And um, that's going to be fun. I, I love talking to you guys. And um, one guy called you cocksuckers. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Cocksuckers on the radio. Cocksuckers on the radio. Sounds like um, Scissor Sisters. Um, where was I going? Yes, I'm doing Talk Soap. Um, we may be lining up a few other talk uh, radio appearances um, around the week of the um, cliffhanger. But I don't know. You know, cliffhangers, it's kind of, you can't really talk about them beforehand. And then afterwards, they're done. So, but no, Talk Soap will be fun. You guys are great. And if you haven't watched, or, or I'm sorry, listened to Talk Soap, you really should tune in, especially if you're a soap fan. I, I told Scotia, I got addicted to these soaps just from listening to them describe them. They love these shows and they know them so well. And um, so if you're a fan of these shows, you're really going to enjoy it and get off on it. And they review Old Dogs every week. And um, even though I got some grief for not returning Ian's phone call, because <laughs> they've got some Ian fans, you know, on that show. Uh, it's a great show and it's really fun. No, I'm kidding you, Scotia. It was fun. I, did, I had it coming and I, I am calling Ian next week. 
Although, don't get your hopes up, because you know me, I love to throw curveballs. And every time you think you know where the show's going, I hope I'm able to surprise you and take it somewhere else. We'll find that out at the end of the season finale. So we have about two minutes left. Um, this was fun. It was so much more relaxing with the new laptop and not have to spend an hour of, of neuroses and um, spilkus <laughs> setting it up. Um, liquid plumber. Oh, another commercial. Sorry, Julie. Um, so yeah, feeling good. Just feeling good. Feeling good about the rest of the season. Um, just, you know, help us keep getting the word out there because we have no advertising budget and it's all word of mouth. And um, it's frustrating to discover that there are a, a lot of middle-aged gay men out there who seem to want to watch anything except a show about middle-aged gay men. It's surprising to me. Um, but on the flip side of that, there are a lot of new web gay web series coming out with 20-something guys that are doing very well. And I, I do really believe that any time any web show does well, we all benefit because it just makes it seem more legitimate to everyone else. So, uh, what's it called? It could be worse. They beat the shit out of us in the poll. But, uh, you know, you can't compete with 20-year-olds and wife beaters. <laughs> Although we tried with a naked David Pevsner. Um, oh, don't make the face. It's, it's all good. We're, we're, there's room for everybody. I kind of always identify, you know, it's funny, I'll have to see if I can squeeze this in here. When I was in junior high, we had an assignment that we had to pick a ad current advertising slogan that most fit our personality. And the one that was current at the time was, we're hurts, we're number two, we try harder. That was mine. I've always kind of had that mentality. So I kind of relate to being an underdog. So if our show was number one, I'd probably become an insufferable pain in the ass. So it's probably good that we stay modest and stay in the top five. That's good enough for me. I love the underdogs, too. I'm perfectly happy to be the 30 Rock of web TV. It did all right for them, huh? Um, and, and again, the thing, too, I have to remember is that, you know, it's about connecting with the fans and, um, and pleasing them and, and, and entertaining them. If we're doing that, that's our job. All the other stuff is just complicated nonsense on top of it. So um, I, are we still on, or did they cut us off? I guess we should wrap it up. It is 7 o'clock. I have lots to do. Oh, <laughs> if you're interested to see a uh, producer's daily to-do list, this is today's to-do list. Um, yeah, so I need to get back to somewhere around there and um, get back to pimping my show. So, anyway, thanks again for showing up. This was fun. And um, two more shows. <laughs> And, um, oh, cool. Thank you, Scotia. And do stick up there. Be sure to tune in for the season finale in two weeks. Excuse me. It's super sized. Um, have your Kleenex handy. Um, I thought it was just me because it's my show in the end. But uh, Lawrence came home a little later and watched it. And I had exactly the same reaction. So... <sighs> on one hand, it feels like we're coming to the end of a journey, but on the other hand, it's like, you know, there could be a bigger journey out there, so. And again, there's a special to look forward to after the finale, which is going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, that's it. I think we're off the air. Thanks for tuning in, and um, keep in touch on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and um, we'll see you next week. I think we'll probably do one of these chats every week from now on to the end of the season. So that's Carol Burnett would do. There's that. And uh, thanks again. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Mwah.